Hey, it's Deep Learning Explainer, and today we're going to look at the paper called Realm Retrieval Augmented Language Model Pre-Training. So it's a way to end-to-end -end pre train a neural knowledge retriever in an unsupervised manner. So that is the first time that this method is being proposed in an unsupervised way. And neural knowledge retriever is a just to retrieve the relevant documents for a given question. So they, they use this to solve the open question answering uh, problem, which is super hard. So what the uh, open question answering is, is basically you will have a question and you need to retrieve documents out of uh, maybe 1 million or even 10 million, 1 billion documents, then use those relevant documents to uh, find out the answer. It's very useful, so that's why Google is so interesting in this domain. So it's published by Google Research. And why is this paper special? Uh, for me, it's super special because it's the first uh, knowledge retriever. Uh, they it's pre-trained, pre-trained in the unsupervised way, and it's also end-to-end, -end, the end-to-end -end knowledge retriever. And more interesting, more interesting, he outperformed the previous state of the art by four to sixteen percent in terms of accuracy, it's almost insane. Because can you imagine the outperform the previous state of the art? Sixteen uh, percent—that's tremendous gain. And not to mention they use the unsupervised way to pretend. So that's crazy. And more importantly, they also have the modulized the, the whole pro whole process of uh, uh, the, the open question answering. The knowledge retrieval is end to end, but they, they also have one, another model to find out the answer from the relevant documents. So they have two components of this, uh, the whole process, and it provides a great interpretability and the modularity. And before, before we go into the content, if you would like to receive more uh, deep learning explaining videos like this, uh, don't forget to subscribe the channel. And your subscription is very encouraging for me to make more videos. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And this paper is published by uh, the Google Research. So you may notice that uh, in recent years, more and more uh, language models are used for uh, knowledge uh, stor storage. So uh, what what they do uh, is that they train a very very large language models on the very uh, large amount of data and they find out uh, if you your model is large enough and well trained enough you can uh, answer some question about war knowledge you somehow learn the common sense war knowledge uh, via the pre-training but the problem is uh, uh, those knowledge is stored in a parameter parameter implicitly and we don't know uh, what knowledge is stored there and uh, where it is stored and uh, we cannot control like what kind of knowledge sh should be stored so it's very passive way to to store a knowledge in the language models and I will argue this is also like a byproduct of language modeling because the original goal of uh, language models is to of generate or evaluate that the synthetic uh, smoothness fluency that kind of things it's not meant it was not meant to learn the word knowledge you definitely need to pick up some common very 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 basic common sense in order to reduce the perplexity but it's not necessary to learn a lot of word knowledge and um, this kind of way just pre-train the big language models also limited by the model size because you can now indefinitely increase your model size. Let's say we have uh, Google ha has a very very big language model which is called T5. Uh, achieve quite decent result in this kind of uh, knowledge assessment, but you cannot uh, in indefinitely increase that. The T the large T5 already have 11 billion parameters which is really really huge model and also recently there's a GPT-3 and people also argue they can uh, you kind of understand a lot 
a lot of、uh, war knowledge, but still, you we we can, we don't have the unlimited computer、uh, resources. We cannot you just use this way then、uh, to solve the war knowledge reasoning problem. So that's why、uh, this paper. I, I think it's important for 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 this kind of、uh, task, this kind of、uh, domain. And realm, realm is a retrieve and a predict model. It retrieves the documents from a very very large corpus. Let's say we keep the whole Wikipedia or even larger. That attend over those documents. They have the knowledge in order to attend over those documents. To make the predictions, uh, for a given question. So the ideas, ideas behind that, are basically you want to reward the retrievers that you can reduce the capacity. You can also view this as kind of a language modeling task, but with the additional、uh, documents help. But the key is your retriever need to retrieve the、uh, relevant documents. They can really reduce the capacity, and. Also, we want to punish. We want to punish, penalize the uninformative retrievers. If the retriever retriever just randomly retrieve the documents, then we should not encourage that. Um, they select the maximum. Uh, let's select the most relevant、uh, documents by uh, the maximum inner product search. So basically, is to calculate the inner product of the.、Uh, The query, which is the, your question and、uh, a document, with a document, then they calculate over all the documents, and select the the most uh, uh, the top documents that has the most、uh, inner product, and this kind of algorithm because you need to、uh, index the all documents, so it's kind of a little bit complex. It's a search problem. They use the maximum inner product search. And let's take a look at the model architecture. So the model architecture is,、uh, like I mentioned, they have a retriever in the, the knowledge encoder, and they have different two different scenarios. One is for pre-training, and one is for、uh, supervised learning. It's for fine-tuning for the downstream tasks. Okay, so let's look at、uh, the pre-training first. This most interesting things, most interesting part here. Uh, you will have、uh, a document,、uh, a corpus X. Then、uh, they will select the documents from just the train on the documents on the, the corpus X, and you will have one piece of text, or one piece of document. Then they mask certain keywords, certain words in in the sentence. They say maybe it's a sentence. Then. Uh, the model, the retriever and the encoder's task is to predict the the mask word. So you can see this as a, a mask language modeling, but with a little different modification. And because this maybe this、uh, mask word is very hard to predict without other knowledge. So、uh, the neural knowledge retriever needs to retrieve the relevant documents documents from the corpus they. Corpus Z, and it retrieve maybe top K documents. Let's say five relevant documents. Then feed those five relevant documents and the, the query, which is the question here. Combine them to the knowledge、uh, encoder. The knowledge encoder have those the kind of information. Based on those information, predict the mask word. And in this case, is a paradigm. And during the pre-training, is a they they use a supervised data. You have a、uh, your question and you have your answer, and you your retriever will retrieve your question as a query, then retrieve the relevant documents, then use those documents as a additional information. Basically, you don't use it as the only information to figure out what the answer is, and the difference between the pre-training and the fine-tuning is that、uh, in the fine-tuning they They don't view this as a mask language、uh, modeling because your question you don't know you, you, your answer is not in your question. So no matter what token you mask, you will not have 
answer right even you predict it correctly so they, they use the span selection technique to select the, the answer span in in the document and this is kind of very uh, conventional way that people use to in the squad data set uh, if you are not familiar I will actually introduce the span selection technique a little bit uh, in the in the later part of this video so that, that's uh, a little bit different uh, between pre-training and the fine-tuning. Uh, the difference is uh, the unlabeled text here, uh, the input, the input query is just the unlabeled text and they randomly, they randomly mask certain words in the unlabeled text. When they, after they mask, you can see this as a question because the question is uh, what's a uh, mask word? what a mask word is and the answer is the original token right let's look at the knowledge retriever first they define the probability of uh, given x of retrieving a document z as this as this so how you calculate this probability is you need to calculate the relevance score between a document a document and your input the input can be your it's your question in this case it's your question or your your query so uh they fit the the input to the bird model and generate the embedding and generate embedding and they also fit a, a document to the bird model and bird model generate another embedding then they do the inner products uh, between these two embeddings and this is called a relevant score. The, the higher the inner product is, that means they are more relevant. And the probability of this document being retrieval under the condition of uh, X input is calculated like this. And because this is the probability, so you need to uh, calculate the relevant score in other documents as well. Let's say if you have 1 million documents in this corpus, then you need to do a summation over one million time basically you need to calculate the relevant score of this input and this input with the other uh, one million documents to calculate this probability and there's one uh, tricky part is how you concatenate the sentences in the document or your input because your input or documents can have multiple sentences and how you concatenate and they use the very standard approach they people usually use to process the multiple sentences input in Burr model architecture. Uh, let's say if your document have the sentence one x1 and sentence two x2 and how you concatenate to get then put together is you uh, use the separator token uh, you put a separator token between your sentence and just uh, this that's it and the, in the end you also need a separate token and here one thing you need to be aware of is uh, the first token is always the classification token because in this case they want they only interested in the final representation uh, for the entire document so how you uh, extract the final representation of entire document the the common approach is to put a classification token and because the Burr model will generate a representation for each token, you will have a, a 768 dimensional vector for every token. But which one you select, you nobody uh, it's very hard to say, right? Then the, because you pull a classification token, so you tell the model, I will always see uh, the classification tokens uh, representation represents the whole document, and you basically you don't. Uh, explicitly tell the model but you, on, you only extract this so in the, in the training time model know the the representation final representation intermediate representation for the classification token it's important it should represent to the whole document if it doesn't represent the whole document uh, the model will now uh, reduce the loss function will now reduce the capacity so just how, how, how the bone model a little detail and uh, as for the embedding, uh, it's not just directly use the Burr model's embedding. Uh, the Burr model in intermediate uh, output for the, to every, for the tokens uh, is 768 dimensional. Uh, it's too high. If you want to calculate the inner products between uh, the input and over the one million documents, 
uh, they will be very, very intense computationally. So uh, what I did uh, is to reduce the dimension. Uh, they, they put another projection layer. Uh, basically, you can see this as a fifth row neural network to reduce the uh, 700 something, 700-ish dimensional vector to uh, 200, if I'm not wrong, if I, if I don't remember it wrong. Uh, re reduce to the lower dimension vector so that you can calculate the inner product uh, much easier. So that's how they calculate it. So you have the input and join the input sentences together and you put into your Burr model and select the intermediate representation of uh, uh, the classification token. And do the dimension reduction, basically to put a representation of a classification token to another fifth row neural network and reduce that to lower dimension. So you have the ve embedding vector for, for the input. You have an embedding vector for a document. Then, so that you can calculate the probability, the conditional probability here. So this is the knowledge retriever. As for the knowledge argument encoder, uh, they join the uh, uh, input x, or you say question query x, with the document v to a single sequence. Then they fit uh, this single sequence to a transformer. In this case, it's a bur. But this bur is different from the bur they use in the, uh, in the retriever. They are separate models. And uh, but definitely the bird is pre-trained. They use the pre-trained weight uh, to as an initialization, and they formulate this as a mask language modeling, just like I first mentioned. Your input is a uh, uh, basically a sentence. They got certain word masked. So the the loss function for pre-training in the knowledge encoder is a little bit different from uh, fine tuning. So let's talk about uh, the the pre-training part first. You uh, can just uh, view uh, the knowledge encoder's pre-training part as a total mask language modeling. Uh, your input is masked sentence and com combined with uh, the retrieved document, then you need to predict the mask tokens. And your mask token here uh, will have maybe a multiple, multiple tokens. So that's why you need to combine the uh, tokens condition, condition uh, probability. Let's say we have uh, input mask uh, this example uh, and the mask the Apple computer here. Then uh, your task is to predict the Apple and the computer. And the probability of uh, you uh, predicting the given Y which is Apple computer is just to multiply the conditional probability of uh, you, the model predicting Apple and the computer. And the tricky part here is uh, how do you calculate the, this probability given the uh, input X and the retrieved document and of predicting a mask token YI. Uh, it's actually very interesting here. Uh, they they use the retrieve document and combine combine with the input. Then join in the uh, use the bur operation to join and uh, uh, predict the retrieve the mask tokens uh, representation. For example, in this case, uh, we have this as an input. Definitely, they concatenate with the retrieve document in the end. And uh, you throw this into the bur, then bur will generate a uh, output embedding for every token. Then you, in this case, we want to process the this first token. So we will get the first token's uh, representation, get the first token's representation as the this this part, this part. So you thoroughly concatenate sequence and get a presentation of the to embedding output of a token that you want to you are processing. And in this case, it happened to be Apple. And you need to calculate how close it to be the learn embedding, which is Apple in this case. And how, how you calculate this learn embedding, uh, WJ. 
it, you it's actually pretty 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 straightforward. You you throw the original document, uh, original input without without mask tokens. Apple computer inventing uh, Apple iPhone, and perhaps this part is like a little bit guessing because I didn't see the clear details in the paper, but the idea is the same. Roughly, they will implement like this. They still like concatenate the retrieve document. You throw it into the bur, then bur will calculate the representation for every token. And in this case, you want the the embedding for token Apple. So you retrieve the first uh, embedding, first tokens embedding. Then you do the probably you would do the inner product to see how similar they are. If they you successfully predict this token is Apple. Then this mask tokens representation will be pretty close to 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 Apple, and in this case it's a reduce uh, reduce um, no it's not reduce it's a burst output in embedding seven hundred sixty eight dimensional vector so you have two vectors one's mask token vector and one's original tokens Apple's tokens then you do in the product or some other operation as long as you can measure their similarity. Then you can calculate the probability. So for the fine tuning part, I think it's actually the trickiest part. And the paper did not explain this too clearly. But I will try my best to understand it and explain it um, as possible. So uh, their assumption is that the answer Y can be found as as a continuous sequence of tokens in at least one of the retrieved documents. One of a, a tree document, and the multi the answer definitely can be found in the multiple parts of the document because there's no rule saying the answer. Maybe in this case, Apple computer can only show up in one uh, part of document. They can be be multiple, so uh, there will be multiple spans. They match the answer. Then they define the, the set of spans as this ace. Then they frame this kind of as a span extraction task, but a little bit different from the most span extraction they I have seen. I think this is a, it's a one way to make a span extraction totally end to end. Uh, so you will have uh, two different birds. One bird is to in charge of uh, finding the span representation, the star span representation, and another bird is in charge of finding the end span, the end of span hidden representation. They will calculate that, and definitely this bird may only differ in the last layer. The they can share the other uh, weights in. The layer before last year layers, so you you will not waste too much parameters. Then you 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 fit uh, your input, which is your question here, uh, and also the a retrieve document. Then you join them together, and you fit into the the stars span star bird. Then step the this bird star bird will calculate the the hidden representation of the start star span. And also, you fit your input and uh, the a retrieve document to the end bird. Then bird will calculate the end representation, the representation of the end end span. In this case, your star span is apple, so it will calculate the the hidden representation of apple, and also calculate the hidden representation of end span, uh, which is computer. If this is the correct answer, then the the value of their after the con definitely I forgot they will also concat concatenate uh, the star spans hidden representation and the end spans hidden representation to a fixed vector. If this is a right span, then this fixed vector will score very high after this multi-layer perception. This multi-layer perception is to kind of a try to assessment, assess uh, how likely this span of being the answer. 
and if it's right span then this value will be pretty high uh, which in this case Apple computer is a right span so this value will be pretty pretty high compared to the value maybe creative iPhone creative iPhone is a wrong answer so uh, if you calculate the star span here the end span here then you can cut in it and you fit into the multi-layer perception the score of this will be pretty low so they define this so now you can you can write a conditional probability of uh, predicting y given the document z and uh, the input x so now you know how to write a probability of uh, a retriever in the, the knowledge encoder then you combine this uh, in the training time in the training time you need to combine these uh, two different uh, weight of uh, modeling probability uh, the, the one is given the input x of retrieving document z and another is given the input x and the retrieved document z uh, how likely you will predict the y then you combine them basically you do the multiplication it's pretty straightforward here then uh, you have the theta you have the you have the phi and theta uh, as a parameter one is par parameters for retriever and another is a parameter for encoder then you do the gradient descent for for them uh, respectively then you can find a minimum a uh, global minimum then you solve the problem so that's how you how you solve the problem as long as you know how to write down the probability you know how to do the, the loss function so this is a, a little um, a detail of them and basically what you are doing is to model the probability two probability distribution one is this given input retrieval um, document z you want to know uh, the probability distribution over all documents also you want to right once I retrieve the document Z and have the given input X, how likely will I will predict this output Y? And you want to know all this probability over all possible output Y. That's what you are actually doing in a probability point of view. Yeah, I'm not sure you, if you ha have noticed, there's one very scary part. In order to calculate the probability of given input X of predicting why you need to do the summation over all your corpus let's say if you have 1 billion document then you need to do this calculus such probability for all 1 billion document then do the summation and what a physical meaning is this let's say uh, we have input this input uh, we got an Apple computer masked then this is the input then you want to retrieve document a document they can help you right but in this case he tries to retrieve every document so uh, you will retrieve the document one in the corpus and try to see how much if the probability of retrieving document one of predicting predicting uh, tokens Apple computer and they want to do this to a document two as well, document three as well. Then eventually do the summation of that. So you will, you have this prob probability. But the problem is, that will be extremely computational intense, and it's also not necessary, because if you think about it, not all the document can help you for predicting Apple computer, right? If you retrieve this document, Apple computer inventing iPhone in blah 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 blah, then you will definitely increase a lot of, a lot of uh, probability of predicting the answer Apple computer. But if you retrieve the, the document is talking about baseball, uh, doc document talking about quantum computing, or even talking about some, uh, some other things, then they will not helping you predicting Apple computer too much. Ba it barely help you. Imagine if you retrieve the one document and it's talking about baseball, you barely can predict the, this span as a Apple computer, right? So that's not necessary to do a summation 
over over the one billion document in the corpus or k document, uh, or z document in the, in the corpus. So instead, they only select the top k document. Top k documents k k can be a random number, but probably under one hundred. They only se select the one top k documents they use to help you the model to 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 do the prediction. So the, you you don't need to do the summation all over the the, doc, the corpus the documents in corpus z you only do the k because it's okay because the rest of documents will only provide a very very low probability it's probably zero, uh, near near zero so there's no necessary to do a summation over there so it's one of the uh, approximate solution but it's necessary because it's you don't have in unlimited computational power and even with that approach, with that approximation, you still very will have a uh, very challenging time computing those things. So that's why they employed uh, max maximum in a product search. If you are interested, look at this paper. Now you have decided you only want to select top K document from the corpus. But how you select that? There's another problem. So that's why you need to calculate this uh, relevant score basically is to do an inner product between the uh, inputs embedding and the uh, documents embedding the higher means they are more relevant then more likely this document will help you so that you want to retrieve this document but the problem is uh, you need to if you want to calculate this you need to do the you need to calculate embedding of the document for all the documents in the corpus v in our example it's one billion document then you need to calculate that. But once you once you update update your embeddings, uh, which is a bur plus a, a FIFO neural network to reduce the dimension. Once once you update your bur model here, then your precompute your your precompute embedding for the doc document in the corpus Z will just uh, be stale will just be outdated but it's very very computational intense if you want to recalculate uh, the document embedding every time you update uh, the theta uh, the embedding the embedding bird uh, that's just not possible not uh, physically possible unless you have uh, such if indefinite computational power right so the solution is uh, they only update uh, after a few hundred of steps, the training steps. They don't update uh, on the fly. They update just uh, asynchronously. If but you will probably say, if your embedding document embedding stale, then how can you select the the, the good good result? But I will argue that. This embeddings, this bird model to to calculate the, the document embedding, uh, even they still, but it will not be updated that fast. So even you just uh, uh, delay the update for a hundred of steps, the embedding will not change that much. And this is only to use to select the top K result, and you still can use your fresh grade, fresh, uh, uh, fresh encoders they updated by your latest uh, the gradient to calculate to to calculate the probability of uh, uh, given x of uh, retrieving document v you can in this case you can still use your fresh gradient but just uh, you couldn't every time compute the document embedding for one billion one billion documents so in the implement implementation uh, they use the index Builders to index a document document embedding to calculate document document embedding embeddings and uh, index that they run in the background. They only use the stale theta to calculate those document embeddings, and they have another trainers, uh, pre MLM pre pre training trainer. Uh, they use always use a fresh theta, just like I mentioned in the previous slide. And once this document index builder calculate all 
embeddings for this uh, for the documents in the corpus, it will request to to get a new theta. Then you retrieve the the updated theta, then use this updated theta to calculate that. But when you calculate, you calculate maybe takes a long time, maybe ten minutes. Then at this moment, you already updated the theta already over maybe 100, 200 steps. But there's no problem. That will not change the result too much. As long as you finish the the batch, the this whole batch document embedding, you will request the new theta. Then that's how we actually run it. So now you know how to train the model, <coughs> how to write down the loss function. But if you just train uh, this model in that way, you will probably not get a good result. And that's why they try to inject some inductive biases to the pre-training. By doing that, they find out uh, it increases the performance of model by a lot. And the first thing they do uh, is to to mask the name entities, the whole name entities and the uh, dates. Because imagine if, if in this sentence, we if, if we want to use the um, we want to use this input to do pre-training, then we mask certain word, maybe the, then it's too easy for model to predict the mask token the, right? Because he doesn't even need to look at the retrieved document. He can just uh, use his language intuition to predict. It's supposed to be the, uh, the start word, the. And also if you mask the preposition here in, it's also too easy according to English grammar, then it's so easy to predict this word in. You don't even need to fine tune the pre-train this model, you just use the out of the box per model, you can easily predict this word. So what I did was they they don't really uh, randomly mask tokens. They mask only name entities, the mask the entire entity. If you only have mask a certain part of entity also you cannot get this uh, this kind of a uh, benefit because if you mask Chicago, then they can so easy, according to Bygren or something, or just look at a little bit context, so easy to pre predict cups. But if you uh, mask the whole entity here, Chicago cups, then you definitely need to look up some document to figure out the answer is Chicago cups. So that's a way, the first way they do uh, mask entities, then also mask dates. Uh, they use the uh, bird-based Enya model to find the uh, entities and mask them out. And they use the regex to find out uh, the date and mask out. In this case, if you mask out 2016, then you also need to look up certain some documents to, to know it's 2016. And they, another approach they did uh, is to prohibit uh, trivial retrievals. It means if... Uh, if you have this sentence right, then as an input, then you mask Chicago Cubs. And if you kind of generate this uh, this sentence, this input, you get this sentence from the document uh, number 10. They say number 10, for example. And you, you retrieve, in, if you don't prohibit the model from retrieving model uh, document number 10, you will definitely retrieve that because that's the most relevant model, uh, document. The answer is just right there. So they prohibit that. Uh, from retrieving the document that where the sentence come from. And another challenge challenge for, for this model training is a core start problem. Because if you randomly initialize the, the document embedding the model, the, the retrieval model, then you will generate a document embedding uh, in the very, at first you were just uh, like random then you end up uh, retrieving the very unrelevant, un very unrelevant documents, and uh, the encoder, the knowledge argument encoder, will learn to ignore the the retrieved documents because it's always not relevant. So you become a, like a negative feedback loop. You will very hard to let the model converge, and the solution for that is you try to warm up your retriever with the inverse class task. So how, how how they do that is 
you your objective is to find a document where the sentence come from. Let's say we have input sentence uh Chicago Chicago Cubs wins the World Series in twenty sixteen. Then you need to retrieve the document they we got this sentence from. This is use this to let the retriever to learn uh what's the what are the relevant documents supposed to look like in a uh, rough way, in, in not too fine grain way, and so that after you warm up that the retriever will have uh, a more relevant retrieval in the beginning of training. So you can see this is such a in engineering challenges, so many engineering challenges that right there. I, in my opinion, this work, the, the most difficult part for this work is not about algorithm part. It's about how you train, it, how you engineer, it, how you make this solution work. Because I can foresee that if I come up with this algorithm, even I have that such amount of resource like Google, but they will still be very hard to train a design result mod model. I'll probably train a model that perform much worse than the baseline or you just maybe similar performance to baseline and I end up th uh, feeling model maybe the algorithm maybe is not that uh, trustworthy but actually not there's a lot of uh, details engineering details that you need to overcome those details after you overcome that you can that's the time that you can really evaluate your algorithm so that's the paper that it cannot be done by one person. It's definitely a teamwork. You need so many people to work on this project to make it work. So if you look at the, the auth how many authors there are, there are actually a lot of authors, right? And so that we let's appreciate their uh, their results a little bit here. So um, the their model here is the last two rows, and you can see they are state of the art now currently. Upper phone the previous state of the art by quite a lot, and they also compare to the T5. This T5 is not a unsupervised T5. They actually fine tune this T5 in the downstream task, and you can see even T5. T5 is actually quite impressive because it's not this design is not particularly for uh, question, open question answering, but it definitely fine tune, and you can see uh, the base. T5 model had on the Q NQ data set have 27% accuracy. But when you scale up 15 times, you, you make a, a model 15 times larger, which is quite a lot. It's insane. 11 billion parameters there. And you have 34 accuracy. You, you increase 5% five, 5 of accuracy by increasing the model 15 times. Uh, I, I think it's not really efficient because not, you cannot always increase your model by 15 times. Uh, the 11 billion uh, parameters is just uh, so large. So that's why uh, this realm uh, interested me. They, they use algorithm way to uh, make uh, learning, this, learning this document retrieval more efficient. And you can see they only have 300 million parameters, then they achieve 40. 40 uh, accuracy, 40 percent of accuracy, which is six, six around six percent higher than T5. And if you compare that to the other approaches, um, if you compare to the Burr approaches, Burr baseline model, it basically outperformed that so much. It's just the two times or two point five times better than the Burr baseline, which is really really impressive. And the most close approach to uh, Realm is this ORQA model. The only different, the difference, the major difference between them is that the ORQA, uh, they didn't fine tune, they didn't pre train, they didn't pre train the knowledge retriever. So we can see the if you pre train the knowledge retriever, your performance is just seven percent better than than then, and you just pre train that, then you're position you no know, your your accuracy gain is seven percent it's larger than you increase the size of model 50 times so you can see how, how important the pre-training for 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 the uh, retriever is and also 
in every data set and especially in city data set uh, which T5 uh, did not run on and they outperform the former state of the art really a lot uh, 16% I think from this yeah the gap, the gap between ORQA and uh, a realm just uh, so huge and the difference here is uh, they use these two rows, uh, the difference between them is they use Wikipedia for pre-training uh, for, for, for the in mask sentence generation and they also use the Wikipedia as a, a target corpus so the US inputs actually are from the same corpus as your uh, target corpus and this one they they generated the, their input corp input sentences uh, use the CC news and the target corpus is different Wikipedia both uh, there's no much significant difference between these two methods because they prohi prohibit the, the trivial retrieval so you can definitely use the same corpus to generate your input sentences and they did uh, some uh, abel uh, ablation study and you can find the realm is uh, the base model and they, they want to find out the first uh, ablation test they want to find out uh, how important the retriever is and how important the knowledge encoder is so they only pre-chain the retriever and don't they don't chain the encoder and they another case is opposite they only uh, pre-chain the encoder and you can see that uh, if you the knowledge no, the, the the retriever is more important if you pre-chain the retriever you have much better uh, performance and this ORQA is you don't pre-chain anything you don't pre-chain retriever you don't pre-chain pre encoder the performance is much uh, lower than, than that and yeah so the conclusion for this I, I would say is retriever pre-training is super important and this is uh, with uh, they, they want to do experiment if you random randomly mask your input tokens what will happen just like I say they their final approach is to mask the name entities and the dates only and if you just randomly mask them your performance is six percent lower and if you uh, mask uh, a random span random span uh, your performance also is worse and you you this is probably the way they uh, Spam bird mask. Spam bird is they, they mask the whole span instead of single token. But performance is also lower than that. And if you use the top five result in terms of recall, uh, this the best method, the proposed method is outperform the rest of them uh, by a lot. And another test is they want to fi figure out how how much the a synchronized update of the document index affect the model performance. So uh, they, they increase the staleness by 30 times. And you can see the, the performance on exact match just drop 10%. And for the recall, top five recall also drop by quite a lot. So it means you cannot uh, delay the update of the document index too much. There's certain limit, there's a sweet spot. But if you update too frequently, then you don't, you don't have that much computational power. And also did another experiment to find out how much the retrieve, retrieve documents help to predict the answer. So they, they run a bird baseline and you have this input with a token mask, masked. And the, the answer for this mask token is format. And for the bird model, bird model only predict the probability of uh, this token uh, for given this input is very low it's extremely low and if you if you run a two different setup of realm model one is you just you give it this input without a retrieve document then your your model give the format the correct answer around 13 percent uh, probability but if you give it a, a one retrieve document one retrieve document there 
then your probability increased 100%. So you can see how much a retrieve document can help the model to do the prediction. Means uh, just prove uh, the point again, retriever, it's extremely important. I would say it's the most important part in this work. And this is actually, you can view uh, this work realm, realm uh, as a language modeling, extension of language modeling. There are a lot of different scopes of uh, language modeling. The earliest one, 2013, from Google, from Stanford, uh, like World of Vec and the Glove. They use the sur surrounding words to predict the mask work, which is in, in the World of Vec, it's the middle word, right? They use surrounding words to predict that. So they have a little bit context. And another, another like involve, in, evolution for that is a skip thought. They use the surrounding sentence to predict the mask, uh, mask words or mask sentence, they kind of things. So you use the more context surrounding sentences to predict the mask tokens. And another improvement is like bird family. They use the whole paragraph, a whole paragraph. They, the input is more over than just a couple of sentences. They can be a whole paragraph, whole uh, document. Then you mask a certain 15% of tokens in the document. Then you use the rest of context in document to predict those mask words. So you use more context. And in this work, you can see they use the context, they extend the, the information supporting context to the whole corpus, the all documents in the corpus. So it is the way you, that you can view this work. It's, you can see it's actually a, a mask language modeling work. And you, but the difference is that your scope is much larger. It's the whole corpus. That's why it's, this work is so interesting. And the impl implication for this, you can also see the retriever as a, the neural, neural memory extend, extension. It's a, a grounded memory and it's very scalable. You can, because imagine if, if I ask you a, a question, how would you retrieve the answer from your brain? You definitely try to uh, access your memory. Memory is like your document, the documents, right? The documents in, in the corpus. Then you, you find out the relevant memories and try to, if the question is hard enough, then you will uh, try to find certain answer in those episodes of the memory so it's a little bit similar to that you can view that as, uh, as this and another is my personal view i i think the you can definitely use the whole corpus as your context for your answer prediction but they will not be efficient so that's why they create a, a retriever to select only important documents then pay then use those documents to make the prediction and I will say the retriever is like the attention. You only pay attention to certain documents. You only pay attention to top K relevant documents. So this is just a way to narrow down your search space. And I, I will say this, you can, it, it can be the like metaphor to attention mechanism. It's just a larger scope, much larger scope. Oh yeah, so uh, it's a long paper and it's the end of this uh, video and congratulations it's, uh, if you can finish this whole video. It's super long, I know, because it's long paper. It contains so much detail, so much interesting approaches. And if you would like to receive more uh, deep learning videos, um, NLP videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Your subscription is definitely my greatest uh, support. And other than that, enjoy your day and I will see you next time.